Good evening to you all and welcome to the Poets Lighthouse. I am your host, Finn Bell, coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area and pleased to be bringing you along with me to meet and get to know our talented poet guests. Joining us tonight is Northampton, England, poet Marky Mark Simmons. Marky Mark is the author of the recently released Rhythm of the Ink and is a performer of poetry and flash fiction. In 2017, he started writing poetry at a phenomenal rate and began reading to a live audience at the Run Your Tongue Open Mic in Kettering, in his home county of Northamptonshire. The pandemic brought Mark's live performances to abrupt halt, but this opened up the ability to bring his performance online and all over the world to places like Nashville, Perth, Australia, and Scotland. He has taken part in the Bradford Fringe Festival and the Melbourne Fringe Festival. Marky Mark has been published in various online journals as well as in Fallen Angel, Script Stuff, and Poetic Vision, and more recently in Sinew, 10 Years of Poetry in the Brew and Globalization. He writes freestyle poetry about his experience, current world affairs, and many other subjects which come into his head at three o'clock in the morning. Marky Mark, welcome to our little lovely virtual studio. Hi, welcome, Finbell. <laughs> Hello it's there. It's great to be here. It is great to be there. Whoa, you know, it must be a very, very late hour there where you are, but I appreciate that you're here. <laughs> it is. It's midnight here. Well, just after mm, midnight. Um, just after midnight. But, you know, that's the Zoom, the Zoom sphere for you that, you know, um, one thing that this pandemic's done is uh, enabled us to talk to people all over the world. Um, exactly. And that's fantastic. It truly is fantastic. So speaking of online um, open mics and, or online in general, Marky Mark, I had first the pleasure of meeting you in one of the ubiquitous online open mics this year. But I have to note that, um, you know, even though there were quite a few, this one was one of my particular favorites uh, of the virtual platforms, and it remains a favorite of mine. And this is no other than Nashville's Poetry in the Brew, led by the radiant Christine Hall. So when I started attending, I noticed you and other UK-based poets would refer would be referred to as the Midnight Poets. So how did this Across the Pond connection begin? Um, it, it was it was really how all, all the connections started, where you I'd start seeing events come up on Zoom and or you'd hear from other poets that they were going to a particular event. And so you, you'd tag on to it, um, sign up for it and, and go there, not knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, and the the brew was is just a, a phenomenal um, melting pot of um talent really uh, from all over the world a lot of american uh, poets there but poets from all over and christine who hosts it is, is just you know she makes everybody feel so welcome and it and it's a nice um it's a nice type of place where you can try new things out it's very safe um mm. and people are very appreciating and and so we and, and us um brits became known as the midnight poets because it's when it's um when the event's on it's six o'clock in nashville um and it's midnight here so we're known as the midnight poets i i wondered a little bit about that and then it just dawned on upon me one day i'm like oh yes the time the time of day for you so you know that yes. takes an enormous amount of dedication but it also shows you know, what a great host and a great platform can do. They, it just draws people in. And so that's always been a constant favorite of mine. Uh, it, it is, like you said, a safe place to to go to uh, on a Saturday evening, for me at least. Um, so it is so lovely, folks, to have Marky Mark sit for a spell with us today. And we will get to talk and know more about him after our short break. Welcome back from our break. 
to our affable guests, and of course, our faithful audience. As has become something of a TPL tradition, to which we all look forward to, our guest has pulled up a poem or two that he would like to read for us tonight. Marky Mark, would you like to read those poems for us? Yeah, this first one's called Poetic Fire. Across the never-ending dark seas, through mountains and trees, metaphors flow, sparking embers, rich warm glow. The magic of the prose flows beyond the shore. No hostile water, no obstacle, no government sensor, no dream condenser can remove the flame from the pyre, burning brightly in poetic attire. Fueling the monologues and rich words of foes, the soot and smut that fall back to the earth, fire, brimstone and subtle mirth. Words collide in hazy dances, verse after verse crackles and prances as it to the air advances, conjuring rich images as though bounding from the magician's hat. Each log adding food to the fuel to the fire, burning the sky with huge words, rich tongues of desire, blazing tones of, and soft crackles elongate to release the shackles as sonnets bounce and jump and weave till slowly one by one they leave. All that's left are the embers glowing in the night through the small hours in fragrant air. Daylight descends on the last sparks of the fire fading to their end. Thank you. Mm, beautiful language used there. Okay, so this um, poem titled Poetic Fire, um, I believe, I feel that it's a tribute to the power that written and spoken word wields. And you, deli you weave delicious metaphors with light references. Honestly, they're like hints of admonishment, if you will, to real life socio-political issues and events. If you could directly address this particular poem to someone, who would that person be? Oh, that, that's very interesting. I think it could apply to any poet, um, particularly on the circuit now, because when, when you look, I mean, we were talking about um, poetry at the brew and, and the poetic fire that goes on there. It, mm -hmm. But it was, I think it was particularly aimed at those poets that are seen as spoken word poets who mm -hmm. will stand up and deliver this, this monologue of, of, fire really and uh, and that could be anything from um a telling telling almost a story to to doing something very political mm -hmm. um but actually using poetry as that fire to to galvanize people and and to make people sit up um and listen and certainly we've had a lot of that on the scene over the last 12 months uh, with yeah. covid and with things uh, some of the events that have been going on around the world um, where people have, have particularly commented on those. Um, and that's what that was written about. It was about how that sort of slams into you, those words, mm. how they eat at you and, and fire into you. And it, and it is like a fire. It's crackling off and, it, and it's all over the place. And, you know, and, and it kind of then dies down and, and it leaves the embers glowing for the rest of the night. I, I know of several poets who go to bed after events and go, I never sleep because I've just got all this stuff firing off yes, in my head and, yes. and these embers just crackling away. And, and that's really what, what it was uh, I was aiming to conjure up. But like with all poems, mm -hmm. different people will get different things out yes. of that. And, it, yes. and if somebody's pulled something different out of that, that's great because, you know, one of the problems that there's been with poetry over the years you know we've grown up with Hemingway and his daffodils and things like that mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very prescriptive and in schools it's very prescriptive about what it means and things like that yes. well actually you know poetry you get what you want out of it some yeah. things you'll understand some things you don't some things will mean more to one person than another they'll mean something different at a different time and and that's great that's how poetry should be you know for the masses 
I, I like that um, that analogy that you made to um, the the sensation of having the uh, the full blaze fire and then the slow burn afterwards because you you just encapsulated right there the the sensation after hearing or spending a night with poets that just energize you and you are still thinking way into the night not unable to go to sleep um, thinking about what. Um, beautiful work and what um, important words and ideas that they shared. So that is that is a great, uh, you know, now that you explain that, uh, that brings even more depth to it. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you have another poem for us titled Plastic. I would love for you to read that as well. Okay. This is called Plastic. Oceans, blue and green. Whales floating, swimming in seas of rubbish cesspools of fools discarded plastic wrappers and throw away nappies designed to keep us humans happy scientific invention the plastic revolution part of darwin's evolution no solution to plastic pollution we need a new revolution fish dying while mps are lying hiding behind mediocre gestures whilst the planet festers in the name of progress we have regressed, leaving our waste all over the rivers and seas and space. We need to pick up the pace. Straws and bags are a political grace for the carbon neutral two-faced politicians flying to conferences in jet aircraft, burning fuel at a mighty pace to meet leaders face to face in, as the world moves at a deathly pace. Yesteryear, some hold dear. Our recycling credentials were clear. While we were burning fossil fuels, milk bottles were being reused, delivered on electric carts during early morning starts. And the rag and bone man with his horse and cart, and no one complained about the methane from his part. With Darwin, was Darwin right about adaption of the species, survival of the fittest, interpreted by the government as survival of the richest? Evolution is killing us, the convenience and speed. We want all plastic we want it all plastic was our delivery tool now we have exploration into space and our planet lays to waste when it's dead the rich will flee to the moon instead dodging the junk they have dumped above our heads leaving the poor to live with the mess left reduced to seas of plastic and shores of decaying gannets sucking dry the last air on this decaying planet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to segue before I um, ask my question. I have to say it truly is different to hear the poem in your mind and hear the poet themselves um, say the poem because your your rhyming scheme was so tight and it was just so delicious to to hear the rhythm, the cadence that you that you um, used. So I love that. Um, so in this poem, I believe you said volumes, league deep volumes, um, in simple three words, evolution is killing us. I'm sorry, four words, evolution is killing us. If you could please talk a little bit more about how this ticking device concern has more and more become a focal point inside your creativity and how this cause and your art currently go hand in hand. Right, I, I think I think we're being basically uh, conned. Um, the planet is dying. The planet is in a mess. Um, but there is so much more we can do, and so much faster. There are schemes now where you know you can run a whole house on two batteries, okay, for a week. Now that would eliminate fuel poverty. That stuff can be retrofitted, and it, and it's backed up by um wind power to charge the batteries right that exists yeah it's there it's all it needs is a government's will to say let's do it mm. yeah and and it can be done so I, I think that the whole thing about straws and and charging for carrier bags and things like that it you know it it's nothing and then you've got politicians who are jetting off across the world mm -hmm. um you know to meet other politicians when actually they could do it in other ways and, and we, we're just lagging so far behind when you look at um what what's happened in terms of how much we've lost yes we burnt a lot of fossil fuels when i was a kid mm -hmm. but when i was a kid we had our milk delivered 
by milk floats. The bottles were picked up. They were washed and reused. That's recycling its simplest. The milk floats ran on electricity. Yeah. You had the rag and bone man with his awesome cart. Yes. Um, he would come around. He would collect your old rags. He would sharpen your knives for you and, and things like that. So we had all those things that we've lost because we've got into this consumer um, capitalism thing where we want everything now and we want it right now. Um, you know, and, and maybe that's part of Darwin's plan of evolution of the species. Mm. Um, but it raises a whole lot of political questions and it raises a whole lot of questions about if that is the way we evolve, is it actually the big, the master plan for the planet to die as well? Um, because the planet will change into whatever way it wants. We might not be here, but mm -hmm. the planet will evolve and, and will change. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I just think there's so many questions unanswered um, that, are, that are probably big, powerful questions rather than, um, rather than so, some of the small things that people tackle. And, and yeah, the, it's kind of a theme that's run a lot through my poetry about, mm -hmm. you know, basically government's not telling us the truth um, and and being able to go more, we, we have to be able to go further and 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 look at all the evidence. You know, there's a big move towards people becoming vegan and having a plant based diet. Yes. One of the problems with that, that there's actually research going on at the moment that looks at what actually having a plant based diet does to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yeah? And actually, there's some there's some really interesting research going on around the ecosystem and what, for instance, a mixed diet would do to the ecosystem mm -hmm. in terms of instead of intensive farming like we do now, having like we did in in years gone by where you'd have pigs and sheep and cows running around in woodland mm -hmm. areas, you know, and, and so I don't think we're getting the full story. We're getting the sound bites, we're getting political angles on it we're not getting the full story. And when you actually get underneath that, you know, um, there's some there's some brilliant stuff going on. The reintroduce, reintroduction of beavers into um, parts of England, um, on, on lowland parts of England to prevent flooding. Because actually, uh, uh, although they build dams, what they also do, beavers, is create channels as mm -hmm. well. So they'll create three or four channels. So when you get flooding, you get the runoff down the channels. So you don't get flooded cropland um wow. and and that so there, there's all these sorts of things that you know people are not not telling the full story that they're hanging on to one or two political things um and, and putting those out there and and this was about saying that you know what what are we doing we we used to do this really well the recycling bit you know um now we don't i mean you could even when i was a kid you could actually take a a, a dish from your house and mm -hmm. go out to the ice cream van, and he would actually, with, with the soft scoop ice cream, he would fill your dish up, yeah? Mm -hmm. So there was no plastic, yeah? There was mm -hmm. no throwaway, you just wash your dish up afterwards. Yeah. You know, and all that's gone. Pop bottles we used to take back and get 20p back off the bottle if you took the bottle back because then it could be washed and reused, Yeah. you know? And, and yet we don't recycle any of that now. I know. It's a shame. Um, you know, what you brought up um, was powerful, that statement just right there about saying sound bites, because that is the frightening majority of um, the world, hearing that, those sound bites and taking them as, uh, as gospel. Um, and and I, I was similar to you. I was brought up in a more um, pastoral area in, in, in the Philippines and the countryside, and everything was just unconsciously recycled without us thinking we weren't we weren't even talking about mm. something as you know trendy supposedly as recycling we just naturally did this you're giving back to the earth it was just the simple thing taking from the earth you give back exactly the same amount um it wasn't plant-based we respected what was killed you know it, it, there was this mm. this beauty and harmony to it um yeah. that is missing as we are like you said, progressing and evolving, and we are only being given certain information because some people have that special interest in keeping things for, you know, not for the mass consumption or good. It's just, yeah. <laughs> and I think that leads on to where that fits into poetry because I, as a person, don't have a voice in any of that. Mm. Yeah. Nobody consults me. Nobody 
gives me a voice in that. I've got mm -hmm. no political party to yeah. represent me. We, you know, we, we have a so-called Green Party that really don't represent everybody in it when it comes to an election, very rarely stand in all areas, etc. So I've got nobody representing me on that. And actually being a poet, it gives me a voice to be able to say, hang on, there's there's another direction to this. Oh, yes. There's mm -hmm. there's more to this. And, and I, I haven't got the solution there and then, but there are other things that are going on that could be done. And and if the will is there to do them and could be done quite quite quickly. And, and the thing about the batteries, I mean, can you imagine eradicating fuel poverty? Mm -hmm. You know, at the stroke of a pen, that's yeah. all it's going to take and the will to do it. The yeah. technology is there already. And if you could do that, that would be a massive, massive play on the planet. Um, but likewise, we also, it shows very much how as a capitalist society, everything is about consumerism and, mm -hmm. and what you can buy and that uh, you know and, and just stopping it for a bit and looking at the planet and looking at what we have got and, and how it how it organizes itself and and that is really important because we mustn't ever forget that we are guests on this planet and exactly. at, and at any time the planet could decide that's our lot and we're gone mm -hmm. And the planet will move on and we can just be wiped off. You know, it, it doesn't mean the Absolutely. planet's going to end. It's it's going to continue doing what it's been doing even yeah. before we were in existence. Yeah. We're, that's, we're that's just, really... I mean, I wrote a, fo a follow-up later on called mm -hmm. uh, 68 million. Um, and, it, and it's about the fact that there were 68 million people in Britain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all we are is 68 million people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Britain, and yet you know we we believe we're we're some big player and, and things like mm -hmm. that. But actually, yeah. we're sixty eight million people on an island. That's it. That's what it boils down to. That's you know, to. whether it's haves or have nots, you know, whoever you are, it boils down to you are people on this planet. Yeah, thank you so much for that powerful discussion. I wish we could go really further into it, and we probably have to really truly invite you back and talk more about this. <laughs> Honestly, um, we are almost hitting the hour. I had more questions for you, but I'm actually going to just ask you one more before okay. we part. Um, so I, I'm beginning to see, and we discussed this uh, when we when we met uh, previously, that um, I'm beginning to see in different, very far flung places in England, in the UK, that the live poetry community is carefully opening up again. Are you exciting? Are excited to be getting out of uh, out of these Zoom sphere and back into these these um, these events? And you know, what does this mean to you? What does this mean for you? Yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, I went through a state where, as many poets have been recently, where, you know, we'd hit kind of a brick wall. We weren't writing much. Um, yeah. We'd done everything and, and we really needed something different. So the opening up of the live performances has been brilliant to get back into that, start my brain working again, meet up with other local poets who I haven't seen or have only seen on Zoom. Um, however, the, the challenge now is to keep those Zooms going and how you feed those in. Because all those people we've met from around the world, we don't want to suddenly just lose contact with all that yeah. talent. We want that to be fed into, you know, the poetry nights and things like that. So I think that's a real challenge. But for me, you know, the opening up, the live interaction, the people coming up to you afterwards and going, I relate to that poem or I liked that poem. Um it is just great. And and having those butterflies again when you walk on stage and that knot in your stomach thinking, oh, my God, what am I doing? <laughs> um, you know, it is it, brilliant. And, and I, I love it. It's, it's really sort of fired up um, my creativity again. I am so excited on your behalf, and I will live vicariously through you since nothing really is quite yet opening up enough here uh, in the Bay Area. And thank you, Marky Mark, for spending this time with us, for bringing your energy and bringing such thought-provoking um, topics to the show. And I want to thank um, our audience as well for tuning in always faithfully to the Poets Lighthouse. 
If you wish to know more about our guest today, please see Marky Mark's author page at rhythmoftheink, all one word, lowercase.com. That's rhythmoftheink.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Marky Mark Poet, lowercase, all one word, on Instagram at Marky Mark Simmons, and on Facebook, Marky Mark Simmons dash Rhythm of the Ink. I have to point out that Marky is spelled M-A-R-K-E-Y. Please remember to show your support of the Poetry Global Network by subscribing to our YouTube channel and liking and sharing our videos. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.